Good morning and welcome to our Wednesday services. Lovely to see you here and it's not windy outside today, which is a good thing. Uh, and it's slightly warmer than it has been, so uh, it's wonderful to be able to enjoy this beautiful weather in this part of the world. Now we've got the little service booklets here printed out. I took bits out of the uh, prayer book so that we can take these home with us so that we can bring them back each Wednesday and uh, save on having to keep reprinting. But I will print out the readings each week on large print. Uh, that way we can see what uh, the Word of God as we find it in our lectionary. So uh, this week again, I was at uh, ministry school for Monday and Tuesday. Monday's normally my family day, so I've been called back in. But next week, as far as music goes, I have something very special for you. I won't tell you now, it'll be a surprise for you. So let us begin on our service book booklet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we say the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Judge of all, through the saving blood of your Son, you have brought us to the heavenly Jerusalem and given us a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Fill us with reverence and awe in your presence, that in thanksgiving we and all your church may offer your, you acceptable worship. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives to intercede for us now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Our first reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Finally, brothers and sisters, 
Pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we, that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you are doing what, uh, that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they have received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bre uh, bread without paying for it. But with toil and labour we worked night and day so that we might not, be, not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Not such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Take note of those who do not obey what we say in this letter. Have nothing to do with them so that they may be ashamed. And do not regard them as enemies, but warn them as believers. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in all ways. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the mark in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 128, and uh, you can respond in the bold text. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. You will eat the fruit of your labours. Your wife within your house. Your children around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed. May the Lord so bless you from Zion. May you see your children's children. Let us stand for our gospel reading. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 23, beginning at the 27th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of the bones of the dead and all, of all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we'd lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, outside the sun, the two readings are quite prickly this morning, aren't they? <laughs> Which do we choose to talk about? Uh, the one that says talks about uh, Christians who aren't pulling their weight, who become idle. And I, um, I looked at that one, I thought, no, I won't go there. But uh, I looked at this passage from Matthew's Gospel, and I'm reminded of how things can go wrong when people drift from the truth. And it kind of ties in with that reading from uh, 2 Thessalonians as well. We always talk about Jesus being meek and mild and caring and loving. But when people do the wrong thing, we see him speak up with power and authority. And he doesn't pull punches here. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. I know that if anyone said that to me, it would sting. I would feel it going in like a sharp razor or a pin sticking into me. And that's what Jesus intended when he said it to the Pharisees and the scribes. The scribes were the ones who wrote down the notes of what the Pharisees would say and, and the Pharisees themselves were the leaders of the time. Uh, those who ran the, the temple and also had great influence over the, uh, the synagogues as well. And they were all about who they were. And that's why Jesus reminded them about, he said, if what they said, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. If we go back to the Old Testament, we know that um, at that time, Jezebel, who was the queen, did not like the prophets because they did not prophesy what she wanted to hear. And so she had an order to just kill them off because she, she was a great one for chasing after um, the, the foreign gods of the time, the, those she had had Asherah poles built so that they could worship these, these foreign gods. And she said, I don't like prophets, get rid of them. And we know that at that time, there was one that remained, Elijah. And he was the one that took on the prophets of Baal. They, they were essentially the prophets of the Queen of Israel. And we know that, that wonderful story where he, they built the altars and put the bulls on and God listened to Elijah's call to bring grace and burn up his offering. And so the Pharisees of the time of Jesus, the, the church leaders, were saying, well, if we had lived in those days, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. But Jesus reminded them of the fact that they were not listening to the prophetic word anyway. They did not recognize him as Messiah, the one who came to save his people. They did not recognize him or even begin to acknowledge that he was indeed the son of God because they said God cannot have children. How can he be the son of God? Because God cannot have children. They refused to listen to the prophets, even those that, that followed on from Elijah. They refused to listen to them. They became insular in their thinking, in their theology, in their writing to the point where Jesus says, you are nothing but hypocrites. And here we are in today, the year 2020, and our church struggles at times. One of the things that uh, came up in discussion in recent times is about how the church can get caught in ruts. And one of the things that COVID has done has meant we have to rethink the way we go about things. We used to take how we gathered for granted. And not only the people who came, but also the leaders of the church, because we assume this is how it will always be. But COVID said during that period, no one can enter your church. What are you going to do? The thing is, we are reminded that we are all priests. 
in God's eyes. He calls us all to the to priesthood because we carry Christ within us. Uh, it is our duty as much as anyone else to proclaim Christ crucified, resurrected and ascended. We are all adopted into that royal priesthood. And so here he's saying the Pharisees are hypocrites. Do not be like them because he calls us to follow him, to preach and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour. Not to testify against yourselves, but to be witnesses of Christ. He says, fill up them the measure of your ancestors. When we become Christians and God adopts us into our families, those prophets become our our adopted ancestors. That's why we read our Old Testaments. We understand the character, nature, promise and love that God poured upon his people. But we also have the richness of the New Testament. That is a saviour who wants us to be in his family. And he says that I will get you through this life. You're going to love the one that comes after. And that is the joy and promise that Christ has for us. And he wants us to walk. At times it's a narrow, hard road. At times it's confusing, it's painful, it's frustrating. But at every step it is worth it. For the promises that flow on through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, ruler of all, in whose kingdom peace and righteousness abound, we pray for those who are in conflict. We are reminded of nations where people are taking arms against others, where brutality is a daily venture, where people are treated as commodities to be sold or mutilated where value of life is so diminished it is worth nothing in the eyes of so many. Take away prejudice, cruelty and revenge. And we ask, Lord, that you grant that barriers which divide may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease. God, our refuge and strength, you have bound us together in a common life. 
Help us in the midst of our own present conflict to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, to listen for your voice amid competing claims, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Spirit of justice and truth, grant to our governments and all who serve in public life wisdom and skill, imagination and energy. Protect them from corruption and the temptation of self-serving. Help us to commit ourselves to the common good that our land may be a secure home for its people. We pray for the Parliament of this nation and for our own states within it. For its members and officers, may you direct their work and influence their decisions to the advancement of your glory and the safety and welfare of this country, particularly at this time as we are still trying to navigate through the waters of COVID-19. We pray so that peace and happiness, truth and justice may be established among us. God bless Australia. Guard our people, guide our leaders and give us peace. We ask that you bring us together as one, reconciled with you and reconciled with each other. You made us in your likeness. You gave us your Son, Jesus Christ. He has given us forgiveness from sin. Lord God, bring us together as one, different in culture, but given new life in Jesus Christ. Together as your body, your church, your people. Lord God, bring us together as one, reconciled, healed, forgiven, sharing you with others as you have caused, called us to do so. In Jesus Christ, let us be together as one. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And we remember, peace be with you. Let us greet one another. Peace be with you.
No, I do apologise for no cue sheet. It was, this last couple of weeks have been strange at the very least. But uh, next week we'll have cue sheets back again for you so you know what's happening in the way of notices because I don't think there's anything on the horizon that I have to report anyway. So uh, let us finish by saying together, Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder, we go out through that door there, turn right out through the gate, and it's not blowing today, so we won't get battered around too much on that side. And as you pass uh, pass through the door, there's an offer tree box there if you'd like to leave your offer tree in there. And a big thank you to the cleaners and organisers who have taken up the role of ensuring that we are COVID safe here at South Grafton Anglican. Thank you, and uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. the same